98.2% of people waste their summer every single year and you're probably one of them. And you don't know how to stop yourself. You don't know how to save yourself from wasting your summer. Time is ticking, but you've come to the right place. Whilst I completely made up that statistic, I've now got your attention. And once you finish this video, you're gonna be equipped with all the knowledge that you need to be able to have the best summer of your whole entire life. Five ways not to waste another summer with a bonus point for those that do make it to the end of the video. Let's go. The first way not to waste another summer is to fix your sleep. I know a lot of you right now are going to sleep at like 3, 4 a.m. Some of you even 5 a.m. because you're just sitting there texting, playing video games, watching TV series, watching movies, because this was me as well. And then you wake up at what? 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m.? That's lunchtime. That's past lunchtime. That's, that's near dinner time. Most of your day is already gone. Your day is literally half done before you've even stepped out of bed. How are you meant to have the best summer of your life, the most life-changing, transformative summer of your life, if you're getting out of bed when the day is half done? Doesn't make sense to me. Fixing your sleep is going to give you way more energy to conquer your day. It's going to allow you to rest your mind. It's going to allow you to rest your body so that your muscles can grow more. Because trust me, going to sleep at 3 a.m. and waking up at 1 p.m. is not the same type of rest as going to sleep at, say, 11 p.m. midnight and waking up at 8 or 9 a.m. Also, getting up earlier is going to allow you to feel way more motivated. It's going to allow you to want to get more done. Now, I'm not telling you to wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. or anything crazy like that. I'm literally saying 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Me, personally, these days I wake up at around 9 a.m. and that's good enough for me to get, get what I need to get done in the day. The second way not to waste another summer is to get your ass outside. <laughs> when, I was, like, when I was a teenager, over a two-month period, I would go outside for maybe two days two days if you live in the uk or you live in a lot of places in america you only we only really get good weather for like two months of the year or three months maybe and even then like today it's summer and it's it's gray outside but a lot of the other days recently it's been really sunny and you're staying inside just sweating your balls off playing playing video games and you wonder why you feel depressed you wonder why you can't get yourself up to change your life get outside and get in the sun for starters because the sun will make you feel better automatically. Like without even trying, it's going to make you feel way better. When you're in the sun, you know how good it feels. I don't even need to tell you that you know. You know already. You know when you're just laying there in the sun on a sunny day and it just feels like, you just feel good. Like, you just feel good. You just feel like, I could just go run a marathon right now. Like that's, that's how the sun makes you feel. Now, what can you actually do outside? You can go and do a workout outside. You can go for a run. Go and play football. Go and play basketball with your friends. Anything. You can go for a walk in nature. All of all of the above is just amazing. Is going to be amazing for you. It's going to do wonders. It's going to allow you to have more energy. It's going to allow you to feel more motivated. The sun gives you energy. We all know that already. The sun gives you energy. But I could go deep into how the sun actually benef benefits your health, which it does a crap ton. If you're a guy, it boosts your testosterone. Therefore, the sun equals more muscles. The more time you spend in the sun, you don't have to spend twelve hours out in the sun. You can literally spend, you know, a couple of hours just in the sun. That's way better than probably 99% of the people that you know. So just get out in the sun, get your ass outside, go for a run, go chill with people outside. Just be outside. Be outside. That's all we got to do. Don't stay inside all day, every day, because that is how you feel depressed. That is how you feel crap. That is how you don't make any progress. Get outside. Number three is to create a workout routine and actually stick to it. When I was 18, my friend passed his driving test and he said to me, Nathan, do you want to like start coming to the gym with me and I was like hell yeah I started going to the gym my life has never been the same since it almost feels like everything in your life starts to fall into place when you start working out regularly I started working out when I was 18 which to me I think is quite late it's never too late to start working out but I started when I was 18 if I had started earlier I'd be way ahead now if I started when I was 14 15 16 I'm not saying if you're 14 to go into the gym and start trying to bench press really heavy weights no 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 home workouts are fine you just use what you've got. You could be that skinny guy at school, as I was, that everyone says, oh, your arms look like noodles. Your legs look like chopsticks. If you work your ass off for two months, two months, the noob gains alone are going to just make, your, make you look like a completely different person. And the same goes for if you're that big guy at school. If you're the big guy that everyone just, just, just laughs at because of their weight. Get lifting weights, get doing that cardio, fix your diet and come back after summer a completely new person. Because it's not just about you changing the way you look physically. It's going to change here. It's going to change your mind. It's going to change you mentally. Working out. It's going to change your whole perspective on the world. It's going to give you that new level of confidence that you've never had before. And I've experienced this. Me, me bulking up a little bit 
it just makes me feel so much more comfortable in the world. And I know people say, oh, body positivity. But if you're massively, un if you're severely underweight or severely overweight, there is no body positivity. Yes, you should love yourself for who you are, but you're not healthy. You're not going to feel confident. So just get in the gym and fix it. But Nathan, I don't know what workout to do. Like, where do I even start? It doesn't matter. Pretty much any workout that you do, provided you've got the right form and you do it consistently, you're going to get good results. And it's going to be a lot better than just sitting on your bed and not doing anything. Depending on if you have access to a gym or not, literally go on YouTube and search right now. Best. So if you can go to the gym four, if you want to go to the gym four days a week, literally go on YouTube and search best four day, four day workout split for skinny guys, for example. Or if you're working out at home, you can say best home workout for skinny guys, best home workout routine for skinny guys and just follow it and stick to it. Be consistent and you will get results. Obviously, you want to you want to get the diet in check as well. Just do your research on that. And those two combined will bring you massive results. Most of these videos that you see will be more than good enough. You just need to stop being a little B-I-T-C-H and stick to the plan. Now, this leads me on to my next point. The fourth way not to waste another summer is to start tracking your habits. How are you meant to know if you're making progress on your good habits if you're not even tracking them? The simplest way to do this, I'll put a picture on the screen right now. So at the top, you're going to write all the habits that you want to start doing. The exercising, the meditating, the reading, the getting outside in the sun. All of these you're going to put at the top. And then in the left column there, you're going to put just the dates. So you're going to put the 1st of July, 2nd of July, 3rd of July, 4th of July, pretty much all the way down there. And then in the rest of the columns, in the middle, you're going to put loads of boxes. And then what you're going to do is in the day, at the end of the day, if you've done the, if you've done the habit, you're going to tick it. And if you haven't done it, you're going to put X. So obviously at the start of you doing these habits, I don't expect you to have a tick, 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 tick every day for everything. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of unrealistic. You're going to have lots of days where you don't do what you set out to do for whatever reason, because we're all on our self-improvement journey. But at first, it's going to be a little bit inconsistent. And then over time, gradually, what we're looking to do is improve that. So rather, so one day you might have five habits. For the first week, for the first three days, you might do all of the habits. And then after you, you just lose motivation, you only do one of them. And then the next day you do like a couple of them and the next day you do all of them and then just it just keeps going. But then after a few weeks, what we want to see is most days you're doing most of the habits. And that's how you know that you're improving. And lastly, number five is to use your phone. Don't let it use you. Now, if you go on your settings and you look at your screen time, I can guarantee you that it's over 10, 10 hours if you don't have a job. If you have a job and it's over 10 hours, damn, <laughs> you're crazy. Some of you even have 12, 14, even 16 hours of screen time. And it makes you think, how much time are you actually spending improving your life? I will say my day-to-day -day screen time is pretty high, probably higher than most people that's watching this video. But I do run my businesses from my phone. My theme page business, so I'm editing videos, posting the videos on multiple platforms, answering DMs, running promotions, all adding up, my, all increasing my screen time. Also filming this video that you're watching right now is gonna be like 30 minutes of footage. And then also the workout app on my phone. And like when I listen to music at the gym, if I do, that adds onto my screen time. So a lot of my screen time is productive and that's me using my phone, not letting my phone use me. So I only really probably have like a couple of hours a day of unproductive screen time on my phone. So what can you do to use your phone and not let it use you? Firstly, you can follow the tips that I've given you in this video and using these, you will naturally decrease the amount of screen time you have. Or if you do use, if you do use your phone, use it in a way where you're actually getting something from it. So you're not just mindlessly scrolling on social media. You might be reading something, learning, starting a business from your phone, using it to find workouts or do follow along a work app. These are ways that you can use your phone and not let it use you. The bottom line is less unproductive screen time means more time in the real world. And it just means you're probably doing more to improve and better your life and to make your life happier and more fulfilling. And by the way, if your screen time's low because you play 12 hours of video games, that doesn't make you, it doesn't mean you're good. <laughs> if you're if you're sitting there playing video games for 12 hours a day and because you're always on the video game, you're always on the PlayStation, you're always on the PC, it means your screen time on your phone is like two hours. That's not good. The only way that video games can be okay for you to play is if you're actually building a career out of it, which 99.9% .9 of you aren't. You're not, a, you're not a YouTuber that makes gaming videos. You're not trying to be a pro gamer. So... Playing video games probably isn't productive for you and you should decrease the amount of video game screen time you have as well. Now, the bonus tip for those that actually made it to this part of the video and didn't just click off of it is to clean your room. Now, you might say, Nathan, I wa I'll watch this whole entire video for you to tell me to clean my bedroom. Mm -mm. Let me tell you this. 
Clean room equals clean mind. Messy room equals messy, unmotivated mind. Let me repeat that. Clean room equals clean mind. Messy room equals messy and unmotivated mind. Let that sink in. You not being at school for like a whole month or a whole two months is literally the most perfect time in the whole year for you to just do a massive clear out in your bedroom and just get rid of all of these things that have accumulated in your bedroom over time, all of this clutter that is just been in your room that's, that, that's built up over the past year. Some of some things, you some of you haven't done a clear out for like five years and you just have loads of clutter in your room. Once you clear all of that out, your mind is just going to feel so much freer to just think and actually you're going to feel way more motivated to want to do anything. Having a really clean room as often as you possibly can is going to help you feel so much more motivated than before. Like, trust me on this. You're going to feel so much more motivated when your room is clean more. You wake up in the morning and your room's just clean. You can actually get up. Because me, yeah, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, even up until recently, even sometimes now, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm capping if I say my room's always clean. But when my room is clean, I feel so much better. When my room's messy, sometimes when I get back from somewhere, I get back quite late and I just chuck my clothes on the floor and just I just leave things around. When I wake up the next morning, I don't want to get up. My my bedroom's quite small, so any amount of mess just makes it just look like it just looks like my room's been tipped upside down. Just even just if I just chuck a few clothes on the floor. So Keeping my room clean allows me to wake up in the morning and feel like I'm going to get up and it's going to allow me to prepare the next day, the night before. And I just, I just feel amazing, man. I just feel so much better when my room's clean. Like, I can't even explain it. You know, if you cleaned your room before and you've done like a massive clean out, you wipe all the sides, you clear out all your clutter, you sometimes move the furniture around in your bedroom. You just feel amazing. You just feel so much clearer. Your mind just feels... Pew. And it will probably make your parents happy. They're going to be like, Thomas, why all of a sudden have you started to clean your bedroom? And you could say, oh... I watched this cool guy called Nathan on YouTube and he's told me how to have the best summer of my life. So follow all of these tips that I've given you in this video and you will have the best summer of your life. You will not feel like you wasted this summer and you can carry. The good thing about this is, and following all of these things that I've said is, once you build these habits up, these habits don't just stay with you for summer. They stay with you for the rest of your life. Anyway, you follow these tips I've given you in this video. You're basically, when it comes to September, October time, you're going to have such a head start on everyone else. It's like when you start a video game, Everyone else starts on level one, but you start on level 50 because you've put in the you've put in the work beforehand. So don't waste your summer. Get in the gym, get working out, get in the sun, use your phone. Don't let it use you. Clean up your bedroom, fix your sleep. And there's one more point. I forgot what it was, but just do all of it, man. And you will thank me later. OK, I know you've got this. I'm out.